bell hosing is not aligned to your crankshaft, it causes additional wear to your transmission, to your clutch assembly, the pilot bushing. So it's a good idea while the motor is out of the car to check. The accepted tolerances are 0 .000 to 0 0.005 or 5 thousandths. Okay, so what I'll do is I will walk you through some steps on how to check out your bell housing alignment and what to do if it's not within 5 thousandths, 0 0.005, okay? What you can do is just uh, bolt on your flywheel and what I do is I leave two bolts out of the flywheel and that's where I'm going to stick my mag base with my dial indicator, all right? So now the next step is we're going to bolt on the scatter shield or the bell housing. All right, now that we have our bell housing on, now we're going to get our dial indicator and our mag base. Attach the mag base to the flywheel where we left the two bolts out. The other thing you want to do is make sure you put your bolts in, torque them to the correct torque, because that will give you the most accurate reading. If you just put the bolt, couple bolts in snug, it won't really give you an accurate reading. So put all your bolts in, torque them, and then take your reading and write it down. electric drill put a little flapper disc in here what you want to do you want to go ahead and hit this <clears throat> don't go nuts you just want to make sure you knock off any heavy burrs because that'll throw your dial indicator off if that plunger comes around and hits a big burr you get a false reading you're not trying to take off massive amounts of metal you're just hitting it with some emery cloth paper you can do it by hand too I just like this tool because you can just go around a couple times, it cleans it up and you're done. One thing I wanted to point out on when you're going to use this dial indicator, make sure all your components are nice and tight. Make sure the rod that goes in the mag base is nice and tight. Make sure all your adjustment knobs are tight. When your mag base is on your flywheel, give it a little wiggle. Make sure the magnet is tight that she's not walking on you. Okay, so now my mag base is in place. You want to just kind of try to rock the magnet to make sure that the mag base is solid, that it's not wiggling on your flywheel. Now that you made sure your mag base nice and tight against the flywheel make sure nothing's hitting here get on there we're checking all of our clearances on the dial indicator nothing's going to hit and you just want to do a dry run run it once around don't even watch the needle just look make sure it's not hitting the clutch fork pivot ball and once that's good then we'll go ahead okay so pay attention this is an important step if if you do this wrong it throws everything off you'll probably take your dial indicator out and throw it on the ground because you'll be so mad so you set up your dial indicator you don't have to zero it out at this time you're just watching that needle but you want to make sure that the needle is going 
clockwise or positive. So it might go negative to start with, that's okay. As soon as you see that needle start going positive, zero, that's when you wanna watch the needle, okay? As far as you wanna watch it to see when it's going to start going negative. So it's going negative, negative, okay, all of a sudden it starts going positive, pay attention. Now the needle's going positive. Positive, positive, positive. All of a sudden it stops. Now it wants to start going negative. That's where you put your first mark. And remember, your mark is the way you want to bring up your bell housing. It goes in that direction. That's my mark right there. I'm gonna take my bell housing and put my offset dowel pins in to raise my bell housing up towards the, this direction where my mark is. Then zero out your dial indicator. Then from that reference mark, you take a reading. You just go 360, whatever the number hits. Um, my particular application, this was my mark here. I went 360 from here, right about here. It was about 38 thousandths negative 38 thousandths and then she started coming back down 20 negative 10 negative 5 bang right back to zero so my application it's out by 38 thousandths. Divide that by two, that's 19 thousandths. One thing I, I want to point out that say if you put your dial indicator and you're going around and it reads 10 thousandths, that's good because remember you take 10 thousandths, you're reading, you divide that by two, that puts you right at five thousandths and you're good to go. Once we get the new offset dowel pins, there's going to be a high spot on, on those dowel pins. You have your mark on your bell housing, you're going to mark the high spot on the dowel pin and both those dowel pins are going to be clocked the same as this mark. So the whole bell housing will be shifted up this way. I'm going to order my adjustable dowel pins from a company called Okay, now that we have our mark established this we have to offset our bell house and we have to move it up towards this mark here. When I was editing the video on how to align your bell housing using offset dowel pins, on playback there's some audio difficulties. So this is just an extra scatter shield that I had lying around and I'm just going to redo this part. The first step is to find out which direction you have to go. So here's my mark, and this tells me that I have to take the whole bell housing and shift it up 
this way towards that mark. What I like to do, I'll grab a torpedo level and it's got the 360 degree wheel that you can swivel. I'll put my level on my mark and then I just take the degree wheel and I'll just rotate that until it reads level. Now I'm level. I'm going to transfer this mark using this torpedo level onto the motor and I'm going to clock those dowel pins to this mark. To pop out this dowel pin right here. All I did, I took a brass punch, kind of ground a little point on it, hammer. Now on this dowel pin, what you do is you just put your vice grip on here, tighten it down, and you'll just tap the vice grip. All right, well, the vice grip wasn't working too good. I don't really feel like taking my torch and applying heat to it. So I got a little pin and actually I put just a little bend in it. And that actually fits, fits in there, gets in there with that little bend in there to uh, drive this pin out. That's all, we're done. Then uh, we'll just take a little emery cloth, kind of clean that out, maybe a little file, just file the holes, and uh, we're good. All right. Okay, so picture, if you will, that this is the back of the block. Here's some freeze plugs. Here's the cam plug. This is, represents a crank. And here's your two dowel pin holes that you, you already knocked out the dowel pins. Okay. So what you want to do is now take your torpedo level and we're going to transfer that mark from the bell housing onto this dowel pin. So you just set your torpedo level over the dowel pin hole. Make sure that this is level. Once it reads level, you're just going to put a mark. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Center it over the dowel pin hole. Make sure your torpedo level this 360 degree wheel is level, you're going to put a mark. And that's what I call clocking the offset dowel pins to these marks. Okay, then what I do, I find the high spot on the dowel pin with my digital caliper. I find the thickest part on the offset dowel pin. I take the dowel pin and I insert it with my mark on the dowel pin, I line that mark up with this mark. Same thing over here. I take the mark on the offset dowel pin and I line that mark up with this mark. I'm gonna take your dowel pin. You want to use a little rubber mallet, just a slight tap. That's it, okay. Make it sink the ridge. And I got my mark here. If you mark on the block, I just gotta roll it up a little bit. Okay, so now that you got your dowel pins in and your marks are both lined up, go ahead and put the bell housing on. Now, if your bell housing doesn't want to go on and you're fighting it, it might be that one of these offset dowel pins might, this one's this way, this one might be off just a little bit. So you gotta make sure that the dowel pins are facing the same direction. The offset of the dowel pins are facing the same direction. So if you're fighting your bell housing, go ahead and tweak one way or the other and then your bell housing should slip on. Once your bell housing's on, torque all your bolts, put your dial indicator in, spin it around 360 degrees and take the reading. Now if you get your reading but you want to really try to get it closer to zero, then go ahead and loosen up your bolts of the bell housing, take two wrenches and go ahead and just move them just ever so slightly clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which way you have to go to get you closer to zero. And then go ahead, retorque these, go ahead, spin it, and then take your reading. And if it's closer to zero, you know you're going in the right direction. And if you want to do it again to get it even closer to zero, go ahead and loosen your bolts up one more time. Just move those dowel pins, offset dowel pins, just move them just a little bit, retorque the bolts, and try it again. It took me four times to 
play with my offset dowel pins to get it exactly where I wanted it to be. So that's basically how you clock your offset dowel pins to the back of the motor. One other thing to know, once you're happy with your bell housing alignment, the Rob MC offset dowel pins, they use a socket head bolt and you gotta torque those to about eight foot pounds of torque. So what you wanna do, you wanna use your wrench, your 9 16 wrench for a hold back and then you wanna torque those to eight foot pounds of torque. And you wanna be careful not to disturb the setting, the clocking position of those dowel pins. And that's it, you're done, you're good to go. All right, on to part 18, see ya. Pressure plate bolts get torqued to 35 foot-pounds of torque and then the bell housing gets torqued to 